I am here with Shatara Mathis in Dallas, Texas, and Shatara is a domestic violence advocate. Uh, Shatara, you have gone through domestic violence yourself. Yes. And now you speak out for domestic violence victims and you try to get laws changed. Yes. When we read about domestic violence in the media, it's basically statistics. You might see a profile of a woman, but it's very rare to drill down to talk about the realities that women face. So can you talk a little bit, what, what do you want people to know about what women who have dealt with domestic violence face? Um, the hardships of being able to get protective orders and the importance in us changing laws that truly will allow for women to be able to get these protective mechanisms in place to protect them and their children because we are having an increase of our children losing their lives as a result of domestic violence. I believe that it is very important that we understand that these are true families being affected, not just a number that we list as a statistic. And so truly knowing that there are faces and families that are behind these numbers that we need to make sure that our next generation can help end domestic violence, not that we're continuing to see a rise in our numbers. So it's important that we get education into our schools about domestic violence, that our senators and our you know advocates and our leaders are truly trained and educated about domestic violence and all that it entails. Because I think sometimes we have a blind eye to things that we cannot physically see. It just become a story that we read about and after the news is old then no one does anything. Right. So we have to address it as an everyday issue that has to be corrected and make sure that we are truly moving forward in changing policies that help women protect themselves and their families, protect, because there are men victims, so it's not just women and children, but protect any victim mm -hmm. that is being violated. And what it, when you said that we're losing children to domestic violence, what do you mean by that? Um, we have had a rise in numbers of children being murdered mm. in domestic violence disputes, um, I know here locally in Dallas, we have had children that that becomes the way that a man feels like if I can't get to her, then I'm willing to take the children's life or even take the entire family's life. Mm. And so really being able to not only protect that victim, but their entire family, because it's not just a woman's issue. It is a family issue. And you're seeing an increase in the murder of children? Yes. When when did this start? And um, what, what do you think explains this? I think it becomes um, with our victims that now that's a new way of a perpetrator being able to keep control. And so, you know, if he finds that maybe taking her to court for child support is not working or the divorce proceedings are not going his way, then the only thing left, if he's not getting the reaction from the victim, is left to be the children or maybe her mother. You know, like I said, we've had a rise in not just children, but other family members that are being murdered mm. as a result of domestic violence issues. Is that getting much attention here? Is the, are, are the media covering this? Um, I think they cover it quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the sad thing that I really, as an advocate, would like for our, our politicians and to really understand is we have to protect our families. We cannot protect the rights of animals more than we protect the rights of our family members and our individual families. And when you say protect the families, what could be done? Um, in my opinion, um, as I state, with the protective orders, with the way police is trained to handle domestic violence mm -hmm. calls, I think we need much more education on really how these issues have to be handled. So whatever training we need to send our police officers and everyone that has to deal with this issue because it not only affects the family at hand, it affects our communities. I was surprised to learn how difficult it is to just get a divorce 
and to get custody of the children because I interviewed a woman earlier and she's got family in another state and they said, come, you can stay with us, but she can't leave Texas because she's got a pending divorce. And I just didn't realize that it was that difficult. I don't think most people realize how difficult it is to get back on your feet once you make that decision. And it took this woman seven years to leave. And now that she's left, she's in a shelter and she feels like she's in complete limbo because of the court system. Um, that is a very sad reality to our court systems and how we have things set up. And it becomes a really harsh reality for many victims that even myself, I had a struggle with custody battles and the child support and the restrictions that they give. So I think that is one of the other major things that have to be changed. We have to allow our victims to be able to get to safety without restrictions of a court that you can't leave here. Okay, that victim should be able to transfer their case to a new district if need be, mm. if that is what, what will save her life or save their family's life. Because you never know really where a perpetrator's mind is. And I also heard from women that the system is not friendly to women and children and that it really needs to change. So what are some of the top changes you would make? Um, I would very much so change the process with the protective order and the procedures because it is very tedious. And if you are not very strong and don't have a good support system, it will make you give up. Um, transitioning, if you're going from a shelter to trying to find a new place to live, that process becomes tedious when you're trying to have to give information to the child support office for custody issues. You know, there should be um, a privacy act that no matter what, any victim of domestic violence should be able to have alternative to having to give the perpetrator any updated contact information, but yet still have a safe place if need be to exchange children. Um, another major thing that I policy I would definitely change is in regards to families that are needing to file for divorce. It should not be that tedious. Mm -hmm. So this there has to be an easier way for our families to get the relief that's needed. And are these changes you'd like to see at the state levels? I would like to see them done at the state the level. The state levels. Yes. Do you get much reaction from Texas politicians? They're uh, supposed to be a very pro family state, right? That's what we hear. It you it's <laughs> it's bent because yeah. some people feel like yes, some people feel that okay, if she wants it bad enough she'll stick with it, but the reality is you're playing Russian roulette to me with lives and real people lives. So So I'll take that as a no. No. <laughs> I mean seriously, these politicians that call themselves pro family yes. need to be called out on this stuff. Very because much so. I mean this is a huge issue and it is. I'm I'm hearing that it is increasing so much that shelters are having to find families motel rooms. Yes. I mean, if this isn't, sh this should be at the one of the top of the list of this presidential election. It should. I mean, these politicians should be called out on this stuff. Very and much And they're so. not. No, not at all. Well, that's why we need people like you to keep them in check. Yes. Thank I you. I hope I can help. You know, you're amazing. I'm here with Shatara Mathis. She's a domestic violence advocate here in Dallas, Texas. Thank you so much. Thank you.